Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have an Easter themed coffee bar DIYs for you today using supplies from the Dollar Tree, Dollar Spot at Target, and Thrift Finds. Okay, let's get started. So you might remember this sign. This is a thrift sign that I have made into many things. So most recently it was my winter themed coffee bar DIY where I did like a ski lodge theme. So I glued on this mousse and you know, I didn't use very much glue, but that like Gorilla Glue wood glue works really well cause that was really hard to get off. So I popped off the mousse and I'm just sanding it down, kind of sanding down some of that antique wax. And um, I'm also gonna have to scrape off what little bits of um, hot glue are still on there and get this ready to remake. I bought this like just a wood sign for a couple of dollars at the thrift store. It was my Farm Fresh pumpkin sign. It was my Santa's cocoa bar sign. It was my Blue Moose Coffee Company sign. And now it's about to have another life. So that's the great thing about wood signs and hand painted signs. You can just remake them um, as much as you want. So you can use whatever you have. I'm just gonna have to try to give myself a blank canvas with this because it's got all that writing on there and I want to paint something else on there for our Easter themed coffee bar. I really like this sign. It's the perfect size for the top of my coffee bar to hang on the wall. And um, I kind of want it to be blue again, but I definitely need a blank canvas to start with to get all of that writing covered up. So I just went over it with two coats of just white house paint that I had laying around because I was working on another project. And then I'm gonna go over with this beautiful blue. This is just an acrylic paint from Target. It's Caribbean blue and it's so pretty. And I did go over this with a couple coats and you know, those like, like foam uh, brushes from the Dollar Tree, two of them broke on just painting this blue. <laughs> They need some quality control. The ones that are like in the hardware section at Dollar Tree, I don't know why those are so terrible. So I have to switch to a brush. But basically I use the entire little two ounce bottle of that Caribbean blue paint to get a nice blue background for our sign. And I'm gonna do another hand painted sign. So let's go here on Cricut Design Space and start building. The first thing I want to do is put squares on there and then resize them the size that I would like. And um, my sign had four inch boards and I want my um, words to be on two different boards. So I, um, I don't know why those were linked together. So I made it exactly the same size that I want to paint on and then duplicated that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put my words on there. I wanted to say Peter Cottontail's Carrot Patch. So just kind of showing you how I put this stuff together so that I can make a stencil for my hand painted sign. Now the font we're using here, this Peter Cottontail's is called Hello Darling and once I get it together, you can kind of see that some of the letters um, do start and stop. And since I'm doing a stencil, that's not gonna work very well for me. So the font on that is, let me look here. It's Honest Darling. And then I wanna do Carrot Patch in a different font. And so we're gonna use uh, the DTC Peach Cakes. And that's an included font on um, Cricut Design Space. So the, the, the first one, the Peter Cottontails though, I did have to um, do the little special button over in the corner to weld those together. That way, like the cursive letters will continue on and they won't start and stop. So it'll make it easier to make a stencil. Then I'm just gonna go in there and delete my rectangles because I don't really need those. And we are ready to cut our stencil. 
It's 13 inches long, so it's a little too long for my 12 by 12 mat. So I'm gonna have to use one of those long two feet mats. And I'm kind of moving it around so I have a little bit more stencil to cover up the board so that I can paint them. So then I cut it with my Cricut. I'm just gonna cut it into the strips and then it's just time to weed. Now, usually when I do signs like this, I don't really use like a fancy cursive font like this. And now I know why, because it was really hard to um, weed and like leave the little pieces of like the E's and stuff down. But that's really the only trouble I had with this. So I'm just taking my time and weeding that all out with my Cricut Bright Pad. And see, you can see how much easier it is to weed these letters than it was the other ones. So we have our two stencils and we are ready to go to make our little Easter sign. I love this paper transfer paper. I get this on Amazon as well as this stencil vinyl and I'll post a link below to both of those. They are great. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put that down and scrape that onto my board. Not sure if my sign was quite dry enough. It felt a little um, damp, but it didn't take it off any of the paint, so thank goodness. But I'm just trying to make sure that it gets down as good as possible. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do a coat of ivory acrylic over both. I'm only gonna do one in ivory, but I kinda need like a background. So that's why I go ahead and do both in ivory. Then after that dries, I'm gonna go in with a color I wanted for Carrot Patch, which is an acrylic paint in the color of pumpkin. And then at the top row, I'm just gonna do ivory. So I peeled off my stencil and just weeding off the vinyl that's left and doing the same for the top. Um, if I didn't was worried about bleeding, I could have used um, Mod Podge or the existing blue color. Um, but I'm gonna distress this and like make it look coastal farmhouse. So I think it's gonna be okay. I did have slight bleeding, but just gonna go over the whole sign with acrylic paint and like a chunky brush. Following that up with a baby wipe and we're gonna have a nice distressed sign. There were a few areas around the orange that was a little too distressed. So I did touch it up a little bit with just a small paintbrush and some of that blue paint. Now, this is what my plan is for this part of my sign. I'm gonna use one of these little cute little Happy Easter signs from the Dollar Tree. I think they have this every year. I recognize this bunny, but he's so cute and I thought he was gonna be perfect for this sign. So I'm just taking off the hanger and then just ripping the little carrot thing off the back and removing all of the staples. I don't know why he's a little bit wet. I must've had him sitting next to something wet there but I'm just gonna go ahead and attach it with hot glue to the sign. I was a little worried about those holes in his ears, but I didn't, I couldn't really think of anything that would work to cover that up on both ears without making it look kind of strange. So I'm gonna go ahead and then glue that down with some Gorilla Glue hot glue. And the paper is not um, glued down on this one side for some reason. And so I'm gonna glue that down as well and make sure it's all secure. He's so, so, so cute. He has that little bow on there, which is not really attached so for some reason. So I just went ahead and took it off. You could leave it if yours is glued on because it was super cute. And then for those holes, I'm just gonna use spackle. It's gonna dry white. So you're gonna still kind of be able to see the holes, but um, I think it's gonna look better. And I really, again, couldn't think of anything to put there that was really gonna um, cover that up. So I did a couple coats of that and just drying it with my heat gun. And then I thought for the bottom row of the sign, it would be cute to do maybe a couple carrots. So I'm gonna use um, these little wood carrot ornaments from the Dollar Tree, a couple of those. And I think that's gonna be the perfect finishing touch for our little Peter Cottontail's carrot patch sign. But first I need to paint them. So again, they have holes in them as well. So just filling that in with spackle and we are gonna just do a really um, simple paint job on these. 
I did overfill them a bit to try to get um, good coverage and just sanding off the excess. And I love using my heat gun with spackle. It makes it dry really fast. Then I'm just gonna go over with like this kind of pastel green color. I think the color is Luna Moth. And just do a very simple paint job there on the leaves of the carrot. And then I'm gonna go in with that same pumpkin color that we used before and do one coat over the little carrot. These are so simple to paint. I have like them in bunnies and chicks and eggs. Lots of ideas to use these. And then I'm gonna go over with that chunky brush and some ivory and do a very slight distress like I did the sign. So it kind of matches the vibe, vibe of the sign. And then I am going to just attach these to the front and usually I don't do anything on this row, but I thought a couple carrots down here would be um, super cute. So just gluing those on to the bottom and we are ready to go. Up next is this tear tray starter kit that I got at the Target Dollar Spot the other day for $3. You get three items in this and they had two different kinds, but what I really wanted out of this kit was this cute little um, directional arrow sign. I think this is gonna be really cute. The colors are perfect. And coffee bar DIYs and tear tray DIYs can definitely overlap and you can kind of use the projects either or. It says bunny trail, egg hunt, and bunny crossing. And then I'll save the other pieces for a tear tray. Then I also got some of these moss bunnies at the Target Dollar Spot. And I think that they're gonna be perfect for this a coffee bar. Now these I already had. These are some of my Ray Dunn collection. There's some adorable little bunny mugs. And since this is a coffee bar, I thought I definitely want to display my coffee mugs. Okay, it's time for the next DIY. I got this great bunny rabbit at the Dollar Tree. He's really large um, for $1.25. And so I thought we could make him look like maybe a little farmer. Um, bunny for our little carrot patch. So I'm gonna use one of these baby blankets from the Dollar Tree. It's this wonderful color of blue felt and I thought it would be perfect to make our little bunny some bib overalls. So I'm kind of trying to measure his body. He's kind of an odd shape because he doesn't really have legs. He just has feet. So I just kind of lay that on top of him and I'm just kind of cutting to size the front of him. And I'm gonna kind of make him some custom overalls, really simply. And this baby blanket is great because it's made out of this thick felt, so you can just cut it. You don't have to worry about fraying. And then I just kind of cut like a square at the top like overalls would have. And a slight cut there at the bottom to kind of make it look like it did have legs. And then I'm gonna cut another piece off for the back of our bunny and just cutting the seam off that, and we're gonna start putting this together. I wasn't so sure about making clothes for this guy, but I'm so glad I did, because he was kind of plain without them. So I'm just gonna glue on that blue baby blanket to each side there, and then kinda cut as I go the top. Now I wanna leave straps for the overalls to go over the bunny shoulders, so I'm just gonna cut a little square out of the top and it's gonna leave me two uh, straps. And so I'm just gonna attach it with a little bit of hot glue at the top so it will stay on. And here are the front of our little overalls. Uh, this turned out so cute. It reminds me of my grandfather, Bert. He always wore bib overalls. He was a farmer and I think <laughs> this really makes me smile. So I am gonna glue both sides down and again, just very simple clothes for our little bunny and glue down the bib for the top. And then my straps were a little long, but then I'm just gonna glue those down over each shoulder. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm wondering why I didn't give it a pocket. Maybe I'll go back and add a pocket to it. That would be cute. Um, but for the little buttons to keep it closed, I decided just to use a couple of these little pink dot stickers from the Dollar Tree to bring in a little bit more pink. And there's our little farmer bunny. I love him, he turned out really cute. 
Okay, up next are these carrots that I just got at the Target dollar spot for $3 for three of them. And they are the cutest carrots. They also had like turnips and stuff like that. Look how cute these are. They're fabric, the leaves are wonderful. And I thought I would display these on my carrot patch themed um, coffee bar. And to display them, I'm gonna use another one of my Ray Dunn mugs. This is my Honey Bunny mug and I love it. And I thought I could just go ahead and stand the carrots up in the mug. And it's gonna be a perfect way to display these great carrots. Look at the leaves, aren't they cute? I know you can make these, but I love them. Now, don't do that part, <laughs> but they sit in there really nicely and I'm just gonna sit it like that on my coffee bar. So cute. Okay, up next I wanted to make a little carrot patch. So I'm gonna use one of these wood crates from the Dollar Tree and one of these little wooden hanging fences from the Dollar Tree to make a little carrot patch. So I'm just gonna cut the strap off the back of this one. And I, instead of leaving them natural, I kinda wanted to stain it. So I'm gonna go over both pieces with um, some Antique Wax by Waverly and do a very simple stain. Wiping off the excess with a baby wipe, which is gonna give me a slightly lighter stain. And I'm also gonna go in and do all the little wood pieces in between. And that's gonna give us a cute little fence for our carrot patch. Then I'm gonna go over the wood crate and do the same thing around all of the outside. I'm not gonna worry about going in and staining the inside cause you're not gonna be able to see that part anyway. So following that up with a baby wipe and wiping off the excess and we have our pieces stained and ready to go. I thought it would look really cute to have the fence um, behind it, kind of as a backdrop. So I'm just attaching that with hot glue. It's the perfect um, width, but that is not real stable. So I went and grabbed a popsicle stick and I'm just gonna cut that to size and hot glue that on the back. And that really improved the stability here of our little structure. And we have a little carrot patch that I'm gonna fill up with carrots. So the first thing I do to get started is I fill it up with reindeer moss, it's green, and I thought that's gonna be a good base of, for our carrots. And then I'm gonna start planting these little carrots from the Dollar Tree. I got these last year at the Dollar Tree. They're the small ones. The ones I got there this year were a lot larger, so I don't know if they have both sizes or not, but eight fit perfectly in there, and so, that is what I did. And then I want a little bunny to be digging in our garden, Peter Cottontail. So I am gonna use one of these little bunny butt picks from the Dollar Tree. They have these um, with pink or blue little toe pads and I thought they're so cute. I just cut the little skewer to size, made sure that I got it the right length and then trying to arrange how I want it. I kind of want it over like on the corner, like the bunny is digging for carrots in the garden. But then I decided it needed a little bit more. So I'm going in with just some onion grass from the Dollar Tree and cutting those about half, um, half their length, but also cutting them at um, different lengths, each piece on the piece of grass so it looks a little bit more random. And then I'm just kind of stuffing that in between the moss then the leaves on the carrots are not great. So I thought I would use some of this greenery from the Dollar Tree and just put some of those in there to give a little bit more realistic looking carrot leaf and to fill out our little carrot patch. And it turned out so cute. I really love how this DIY turned out and it was so easy. So just finishing up with a little bit more of that grass that I had cut off until I get it exactly how I like it. And this project is ready to go. Isn't it cute? I love that little buddy butt. <laughs> okay, the next project, I'm gonna use a couple of these signs from the Dollar Tree to make a easy garland for the front of our coffee bar. This one has the burlap bunny and all the pastel little peepee -pee bunnies. And it's not quite long enough, so I'm gonna combine that one with the one from this Easter Bunny sign. That's got the burlap bunnies as well. I'm gonna take two of those burlap bunnies and then that's gonna be the perfect length for our little sign. But now my like um, 
twine's not quite long enough either. So I'm gonna use some twine from the Dollar Tree. And this is the simplest garland I've ever made. These things worked perfect for this. I'm just gonna use a big needle and we're gonna start stringing this together. I'm just gonna alternate like the pastel colors, which are perfect for Easter with the little burlap bunnies. And we're gonna have a little pennant garland to go hang on the front of our coffee bar. And couldn't be easier. I'm so glad I picked up these signs because these are perfect. And there we go. I just have to cut it and attach it to my shelf. And then I also picked up some of these pretty blue mugs from the Dollar Tree. I usually personalize them, but I'm not going to today. And then I also had this leftover, I think from the Target Dollar Spot last year, just a little egg tree. I'm gonna put that on the bottom part of my coffee bar. Okay, are you guys ready for the final reveal? Here we go. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to hit like, comment your favorite project below, and happy Easter. You, you've been hiding in the shadows way too long. You always thought that you were weak, but babe, you're wrong. Yeah, you better step into the light, just give it a try. Think that it's time you let that spark out. You've been hiding in the shadows way too long. Cause you're a work of art